Philips has once again ignored the prospect of using a QD OLED panel for its latest flagship TVs, the OLED Plus 910 and OLED Plus 950, instead opting for the new 4-stack primary RGB tandem OLED from LG Display. Plus, the OLED Plus 950 has been designed to provide the best picture quality using the dual-engine P5 processor, but without a Bowers & Wilkins sound system, a direct response to feedback from AV Forum's viewers and readers. So, let's find out some more. This week I joined Europe's AV Press for a trip to Barcelona to look at the new products for 2025 from Philips. There were several mini-LED TVs, some soundbars and of course audio products announced, but the main focus was definitely on the two new OLED Plus flagship TVs that use the LG Display primary RGB tandem OLED panel now that MLA is no longer around. Although I do think we need to shorten this name and find something a little bit better because primary RGB tandem OLED just doesn't quite roll off the tongue. So what do you think? Have you got any suggestions on how we shorten the name to things like MLA was really quite easy to remember. So do we go with four stack? Do we go with two LED? Give us your suggestions in the comments below. I do think that we'll see this panel everywhere this year as LG have it in the G5 as we saw at CES. Panasonic are using it in the Z in 95B and Philips obviously using it in their two flagship models for 2025 plus Samsung also featured this panel in the 83 inch S95F. If you are someone who likes placing bets, there's probably another major Japanese TV brand likely to join the four-stack party at the expense of QD OLED. So is this the final calling call for QD OLED as a large screen TV technology? Are we about to see it disappear? That's probably for another video, but let us know in the comments. Getting back to the task at hand, the OLED Plus 950 is the flagship model at the top of the lineup and it features a dual engine P5 processor, a four stack panel, four sided ambilight, but no Bowers & Wilkins sound system. This is a premium TV for use in setups that already utilise an external sound system like a home cinema, home theatre system and so on. It's a real enthusiast TV and something that you guys have been asking for for a while. Why spend all this money on a flagship and also get an audio system that you don't need but you've paid for? This new panel will provide 350 nits full screen and up to 3700 nits peak brightness, but this will be slightly lower in an accurate D65 picture setting. There's an increase in the colour volume and brightness, along with a claimed 99.5% DCI-P3 coverage and 83% BT 2020 gamut coverage, plus there's a 20% power reduction. The dual engine chip will only be found on the flagship OLED Plus 950. The OLED Plus 910 features the single engine version, but it has the same four stack OLED panel as the flagship with roughly the same color and nits performance, but it does add in a 3.1 Bowers & Wilkins soundbar and also sports four sided ambulite. So let's catch up with Philips picture quality guru Danny Tak and I started by asking him why there was no more MLA on this year's flagships. Yeah, um, I was surprised uh, and I, I saw the good things uh, previous years what MLA did uh, that uh, when I heard they would drop it I said ooh, is this going right? Uh, but uh, yes, it, it, it did, uh, it turned out to be right and the main reason why MLA has dropped is uh, because of uh, cost reasons in the panel, difficult to produce, uh, high costs in production. And how long have you had to develop uh, this year's TVs on the new panel and um, what advantages does it give you overall in terms of performance and so on compared to MLA? 
uh, well, our cycle in uh, development in TV is one year. I don't know how long that uh, LGD, the supplier of our panel, has been uh, working on uh, that uh, new panel. But uh, for us uh, to design that panel in is one year. And as already mentioned, the uh, uh, advantages of that panel over MLA are uh, 350 net lights or more uh, light uh, for a full white panel, uh, well, a white, full white picture, uh, 3,700 uh, net for uh, peaks uh, uh, of 3%, uh, 99.5% color gamut. Over last year, it was 97, and uh, better power consumption, 20% uh, less uh, power consumption. Danny, for a little while we have been talking about the possibility of Philips using QD OLED. With this new panel, does that mean that you're not going to go down that route? We always consider QD OLED, uh, Phil. During our development process, we are uh, looking to both. But uh, in, the last, uh, in the past years, we were uh, every time uh, happy with the uh, LGD panel to make our picture quality. And it turned out uh, this year again, there was no real reason to, to swap to the uh, to the QD panel. So we we still are now with uh, LGD panel with the four uh, the four layers uh, the dual tandem uh, with good performance. But uh, QD OLED will always be in our uh, package of uh, of choice uh, of uh, displays. And what advantages is it in? specifically that you think you get from LG Display's new tandem panel? Uh, that is, uh, again, more light, so they're making beautiful steps there. Uh, 15 nit on the full white, uh, reaching out 350. Uh, on the uh, peak uh, light for 3% window, they are going out to 3,700. Over last year, 3,000. So in light, we, uh, we stay good, we make good progress. And we also are catching up in color gamut. Uh, reaching now at 99.5% DCI-P3, that's uh, also nice. Uh, and all of that comes together uh, with a 20% reduction in, in power. So a good choice, um, but as I said, uh, Phil, uh, QD OLED will stay in our uh, package uh, of choices, uh, not uh, uh, only this year, it's still on the uh, LG. And one of the advantages, I, I am presuming because I've yet to fully test the, the new panel, is colour volume. Um, are you getting more colour volume there with this new panel? Is that something that you can work on this year and improve the colour performance? Yes, definitely. Um, it, uh, it's really visible uh, for HDR sources, definitely. And for SDR sources, we have a nice uh, feature inside our uh, P5, 9th generation P5 AI dual engine that is uh, the AI adaptive gamut enhancer that can uh, map uh, the incoming source to the uh, color gamut of the display and make full use of that, uh, of that increase in color volume. One thing that might surprise a few people out there, because OLED Plus it's your premium range and it always features Bowers and Wilkins sound on board, uh, but the OLED Plus 950 doesn't have the Bowers and Wilkins sound on board. So maybe you can explain that one to us. Well, uh, there seems to be in the market and uh, uh, many consumers are asking for that. Also, some of your readers uh, from AV Forum are asking for having the best PQ, but uh, then with their sound system they have already in their home. And we, we didn't deliver that. Our OLED 8 was a single engine uh, P5. Um, with uh, that was good matching with their sound system, but uh, now we are giving them uh, a TV without power, so no over. Uh, you don't need to overbuy now on sound, uh, and you get the uh, ability of having the best PQ that Philips can provide through the dual engine. Uh, and another question the forums members will have is obviously HDMI 2.1. I understand you're still using the Pentonic 1000. Uh, system on chip, so I'm presuming it's still just two HDMI 2.1. Yes, it's uh, two 2.1s, uh, which uh, at this moment is still uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, I mean, enough for uh, for what you have at home, um, and uh, the, the, the choice is 
mainly because with this Pentonic 1000 and all the P5 stuff we do on top of the Pentonic 1000, uh, we can deliver the best PQ, uh, which uh, going to a lower level of Pentonic with more uh, uh, HMI 2.1 uh, ports, uh, we would do a drop in PQ and uh, we, we choose not to do that. So that's it for our Barcelona coverage from the Philips TV launch. Let us know what you think, what you thought the highlights are, um, and what you think about Philips TVs and Ambilight and so on. You can do that in the comments below. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and also consider subscribing to the channel, which really does help us and get our videos out there. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.